Hey y'all, welcome to Circle of Tone, and today we have ACDC. Now this one has been years in the making. I've attempted and failed multiple times on this one. And this is going to be a journey, probably two or three parts. So uh, first part is going to be a little secret weapon of ACDC that not enough people really give credit for because it's always about the Gibson SG, Angus, Angus, Angus. Uh, if you like these types of vids, uh, we have a Circle of Tone Facebook. Search Circle of Tone in Facebook. Come join. We're over a thousand strong. Share your music, say hello, and we talk about, you know, recording, things like that. And uh, also on Instagram soon, I'm going to be uh, posting all my settings and mic positions, things like that. All the links are below. All right, let's get down to it. Circle of Town, ACDC. <laughs> And we're back. So that was close, no cigar. Because there is a blend of an SG in there, and obviously you guys probably saw me bashing away on a, an LP style guitar, and the blend of the two didn't work there, but it wasn't that. The, the problem that I had was deeper. But just to see what they did in that era in 1977, uh, press pause. And this is the gear that we know that they used on that album. Super bass. Uh, at the time, it was most likely stock. And obviously, the Gretsch guitar the, that he used, the Beast, as it's known, uh, that's gone through more changes than Oprah Winfrey. That thing has had... It's had the bridge changed out, it's gone from, it had a PAF pickup put in the middle position, then it had both the pickups taken out to the neck and middle position, and only the uh, bridge pickup was in there, all sorts of stuff. But he has rocked that same guitar throughout practically all of those albums. And obviously, you know, there's a few other guitars like Gretsch, Falcon, I believe, but that is the mainstay, Gibson SG and that Gretsch Let's talk about his Marshall. Let's talk about the super bass. Why is it called a super bass? Back then, the, the they were the all most like, like I've done a video before where you can use your guitar amp to play bass through because, you know, as long as you use the modern speakers like vintage 30s, they, they won't blow. You know, like people have been putting nine string guitars through them, full fully cranked, like virtual bass synths, and you're not going to blow modern speakers. Back in the day, you could not use the old Celestians uh, as bass speakers because they would blow like that. But today is different. So the super bass, he's using a super bass Marshall, but it's really similar to my 
and 69 Plexi. There, there isn't, it's actually like a JT, I believe it's a JTM 45 circuit practically, but with a couple of values changed out. I might be different, I might be wrong, but I do believe it's, it's very, very subtly different from the guitar amp. And I think those little values are where I'm off. I tried everything to try and get my 69 Plexi. Yeah, I know it looks new, but it has uh, vintage internals to get it to sound like that album. I couldn't do it. And I believe it's because of these little resistors and the the the, the uh, different, I think it's a cap capacitor difference as well. But they're not huge. But I was getting too much gain. I could not get that woody, knocky, 3D type of sound. Mine was more fizzy. And I could, I even, because I have a 100 watt amp, I even, well, check it out. I'll just, a picture paints a thousand words. Okay, so let's take the back off this batch. Gone forever. Never forgotten. Rest in peace. Of course. Gone forever. Never forgotten. Rest in peace. All right, so what we're doing here, I can't nail the tone because they used 50 watt amplifiers. I have 100 watts and to get a sweet spot on a 100 watt amp, I'm getting too much gain compared to what they had. What I'm doing is I'm removing the outer tubes and when you do that, um, I'm gonna have to change this to eight ohms because uh, I was running at 16 ohms. It's actually on 8 ohms now, which uh, I didn't know, which is great. <laughs> and I'm going to see what tubes I have in here. And I want to see if I can get some lower gain ones in there. Tubes can uh, have quite a drastic effect on the tone. I have nice tubes in here. These are all GE uh, 6, 681s. Vintage. New old stock up in this bunch. i got JJ tubes. Mm, not the biggest fan of GJ, to be honest. Uh, Actually, these have the fucking tubes in it that I was actually going to put in it. So it's not the preamp tubes that's the problem. We'll see them. Let's try it out. Let's try. I have a solid state tube that's super low output. So let's try that one. This is my tube box. Probably can't see anything. Let me see <laughs> Oh, what's this? Bitches don't know about my... Uh, Mustard caps, new or stock vintage mustard capacitors. This is great TV, kids. This is a JJ, fuck that. Electro harmonics. It's bog standard, middle of the road, average. Just like me, sure. I like mass tubes because they test the fuck out of them. They're average again. I, I probably, if you had to twist my arm, I probably do prefer. EH. They're probably all fucking soft text with none of that. It's a Chinese tube, so it's not sound that good. You never know sometimes though. It looks like I've used all my good shit like inside this and what I love about the old Marshalls, look at that. Three preamp tubes. Ooh, mystery tube. I don't know what this is. That probably means it's fucking really old. I can't even see it. It's tight, it's a crack. Fuck it. I think this might actually be from in here, there's preamp tubes. Hopefully that fucking works, who knows? <laughs> what is this? CVC. Chalma. It's probably, again, from inside this bad boy. And last, we have a electroharmonics. I think electroharmonics are actually the same as Mesa. I think they might be Subtex. So what am I doing? A 50 watt, when I crank it, it's not going to have as much boom in the low end. Just tight, just a smidge. I'm hoping that gives me the knock that I'm looking for. Because the sweet spot is flapping the shit out of my um, black back. So the, what I'm getting is speaker distortion, too much speaker distortion. 
because the sweet spot on this is like everything on 10 base, you know, to, to taste. Basically, you what you do is, well, you don't do it because, uh, you know, you, you probably set fire to your house. I'm removing the out, outer tubes. I'm going to use these two, so it'll drop it down to 50 watts. Change out some preamps that will hopefully be low again, but I don't think they will. I think I already had the best tubes in there. Uh, and then we'll see how it sounds. And hopefully it sounds better. And the funny thing is, I was running this uh, 8 ohms into a 16 ohm cab, which actually changes the, the sound. Of, uh, it actually changes the tone a little bit, and a friend of mine actually prefers it. It's a safe mismatch. If you're going 8 ohms into 16 ohm cabinet, you know, you don't have to worry in that direction, but uh, some people like the effect that it has on the tone versus, you know, matching the impedance. So yeah, I took out the outer power tubes. Don't do this at home, kids. And I had to adjust the uh, the ohms as well on the back of the cab. If he's running at 16 ohms and you take the two power tubes out, you've got to drop it down to 8 ohms just so that there's an impedance match. But enough of that. So what that does backfired. What I thought, I thought I was getting too much speaker distortion right because the sweet spot on a 100 watt amp is different from a sweet spot on a 50 watt amp because it's pushing more it's flapping the speakers more right more more volume more flappage it's not double the volume but it's you know it's probably a 20 30 percent more oomph so i figured out i'm getting too much distortion because my speakers were struggling and if i backed off the power section and then i got a different sweet spot that that sweet spot wouldn't be so uh, you know, causing the speaker distortion. I also swapped out some preamp tubes, but I'd already set it up perfectly. Uh, it got even worse. It got even fizzier, and it got even more distorted somehow. I guess the preamp uh, section kicked in a bit, and I didn't like it. If you want to listen to the differences, the first half uh, on one side is the 100 watt, uh, or, uh, both sides are 100 watt, and on the second part, after the Let There Be Rock, then the 50 watt aspect kicks in on one side. I only did one side because I was so uh, disappointed with the results that I didn't want to put both sides into that fizziness. So, yeah, so I'm close. And also, because this is going to be a multi-part video where I try and get it right, a friend of mine, a local guy that's actually, you know, he's on the Facebook group, uh, he's going to lend me things which might be missing. The interesting thing about ACDC is they know their stuff. They actually, they had a brand new console that was installed into one of the rooms and they didn't like it. They didn't like it. They went back to the Neve console. There's something magical about Neve. I keep saying it and I need it in my life. So uh, Nick is going to be lending me a, uh, a I believe it's a Vintech Neve uh, Pre, Neve style Pre. And also I'll be getting an SG in the mix as well. So now with this, I'm going to try and perhaps tinker with the values that's in mind because I want that sound. I want that super bass knock. So maybe a, li a little bit of, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get there, but you know, it's a different, slightly different circuit, I believe, to, for my 69 Plexi to, to that. But hopefully with a few value changes, I can get in the ballpark and get that magic. I know kind of from doing a lot of ABs with the real deal with, with Neves, you know, listening to the BAE stuff and uh, warm audio and things like that. They can't really get that Neve thing. It's, it's, a, it's more of a, I believe it's the vintage uh, way that it was actually manufactured back then is part of that magic. You know, it's not magic, it's science, but you know, let's call it, uh, you know, these stupid terms. Because, you know, caps caps don't all sound the same. Search for Uncle Doug capacitor tests. And he puts the old school capacitors up against more modern nylon ones, things like that. So what was missing in mine? Technique. I thought I was going to roll through this one easily. And I even had to go on the, on the Facebook group to say, hey, how the hell is this bloody thing played? Because it was kind of three things at once. One was doing open holding chords. The other one was kind of strumming. And I think there's another one in the mix as well that is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's it's almost like a, like I say, it's a, it's an inimitable, which is really hard for me. So the style was bad and I can't even do, I thought I'll avoid the hybrid picking stuff that they do, the finger picking, because um, I can't do it. So this is like a rocker where they were using picks. And uh, 
Also, Malcolm also uses really heavy strings. Uh, for that time, nobody was really doing that. And so he was a bit of a pioneer when it came to... Everyone was really on super thin strings back then. There's another, there's another theory as well that this, the amp wasn't the super bass. There's a theory that it was a Marshall 2203. But the timelines for me really don't cross. It's not like they can overnight them back then to, uh, from Marshall to Australia. You know what I mean? It would take weeks and months maybe even to, to ship stuff over. They were actually in the UK. So they may have been in the, the Marshall um, offices. They might have got a prototype, you know, before it was released. But I don't, I don't think so. I don't believe that. It's, it's, too, it's too late. Also, it, it, was, it, was, it was too early as well for the uh, wireless pack that Angus famously uses, which kind of knocks down some of the scratchy, scritchy high end and gives it a little bit of a bump, I believe. Uh, but so he wasn't using that either at the time. So I do think they were stripped down more back then. And uh, the speakers, the speakers, I used a black back. Um, I think maybe next time I'm going to use the, an earlier green back because there is some excitement in the upper echelons of that mid spike that could be from the console. You know, it could be, but also it could be from the speaker. So I'm going to start. That's why this is going to be a multi part. If I was going to go down my usual track where I just agonize for months on this nonsense but i figure out let's you know you can see me go through my process and then maybe i'll upload more videos instead of being an idiot for a month and not releasing anything so this is kind of stage one of me seeing all the little details that are wrong with my version and then you know slowly hopefully we can build it up where we get it perfect and i have a 2203 if it does come to that and it was that prototype you know really early i don't think it was though you know, if I'm still failing, then I'll, I'll fire that bitch up. Because this is circular tone, bitch, and we don't mess around. <laughs> uh, I mean, what a band. I think the secret, the real secret to this, though, are Daisy Duke jean shorts. Lemmy wore them, and also Bon Scott, the most amazing singer, rock singer in history, in my opinion. Amazing. I did the vocals for this. I actually... Uh, I did the more of the song, but it got flagged for a copyright, which is, it's, it's probably, it's fair enough. I mean, it's not my music, you know, even though it's uh, me playing the guitar and the bass and the vocals on it, you know, it's it's fair enough, I think. But uh, this is something I'm going to have to start playing in the style of and not actually playing their songs. And I'm going to have to sing in the style of, because I sing, I did leave the Let There Be Rock in there though, because I was pretty proud of myself for hitting that. I think uh, I, 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 it was actually one of the first takes that I tried of it. And I hit that yell and I'm like, I patted myself on the back on that one. Usually I'm really hypercritical of my vocals. The, re the earlier stuff, let that be sound, it was cringe. But then I hit that yell, I was like, I'm going to leave that bitch in there. <laughs> All right, man. So, so that was it. If you, have, if you know anything, if you have some insider information on what they were using back then, let me know in the comments and uh, any suggestions for other bands. Metallica going to be coming up. I've got some good, good info on that one. And also we have some, well, you have to maybe uh, subscribe and find out. Hi, chaps. You've been awesome. Like I say, come visit us in Facebook and say hi. And that's it. Subscribe, all that shade, and have a good one.